old doggy's backstage tour of the data center, eh? See where the magic happens, eh? Finish your green M&Ms and follow me, ladies and gents. <laughs> This old tape robot was great back in the day. I picked this old baby up on the Japan demo tour in 95. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, man. Thanks, man. Don't know how we got some. Yeah. Um, this way. Sad story, that one. Had to pull the plug. Gave me nothing but trouble and heartache. Um, this way, I think. We now come to the creme de la creme of unified stories for virtualized environments. We run VMware. They're the best. And they look the best with this little baby from EMC. She runs all my virtualized tier one and business critical apps. Five nines of availability. Yeah. But I had to make some slight modifications. Whenever I need more storage efficiency, performance, or simplicity, I just twist these little knobs and then, on a scale of 1 to 10, this baby goes to 12! Twelve! You can get 20% more storage just by switching to EMC. Guaranteed. So, thank you Abhijit for introduction and you can get 20% guaranteed from EMC. How is that? Let's see. But before, how are you doing guys? Oh, you know what, just forget the picture here, yeah? don't take me wrong. How are you doing? Fine? But then this picture also tells some part of reality of your day to day life. Do you agree? Yes, come on. All right. And what is this reality? Budgets, data growth, performance, expenses, operating. What do you do? Budgets are flat. Data growth? 40, 50%, 30%? I'm sure data growth is there. Performance, give me more. Does it ever end? Nah. Operating expense, you really talk about operating expenses? Adjust the capex thing. By the way, operating expense are, as you're growing day by day, they are forming large chunk of your data center management expenses. Trust me, they are huge. <laughs> simplicity. Well, this picture says something about simplicity. And then, efficiency. With this amount of data growth, the amount of cold data you are keep hosting on the storage is still there and it's growing exponentially. So how come your storage can be efficient with this amount of cold data being there? It's about this whole 
paradigm of complexity and challenges in IT environment. And the, the, the problem with us is how do we transform? How do we change and address this situation with all these reality? Well, nothing is all bad. There are some silver lines in, uh, um, in the today's technology. And one of them is CPU growing almost 100x decade on decade by Moore's law. But the problem is we have not seen the, the same level of impact on our underlying storage technologies. Your hard disk, typically SAS, SATA, but they have not evolved as my CPU is evolved. Agree? But here comes the star. Uh, how many of you heard on, uh, about Flash? Wow. Glad to be in, uh, with this audience. It fundamentally changes the way, it transforms the way we deal with IT storage environment. Because now I have ability to scale up the performance independent on scaling on the capacity. So, question for you guys. Can I have the poll someone? Are we going to flash the results? You can click the button now. The top button? Hold on. Somebody here? Okay. All right, so we'll just move on. Um, I'm sure you have responded. Uh, easy. Oh, OK. Thank you. Technology gap, little. 49% says we feel flash is too expensive. OK. 15%, then 23% we need expert help to ascend well. Good news, EMC is there to help you out. Uh, fairly even result on less uh, on the other three sides, but A side says it is expensive. You know what? We'll address this question right here in the next 20 minutes. And if you have to take one thing on this session, address your option A. And I'll show you how it is not expensive. All right? Let's go to next. So what we have seen here in, in, in today's IT storage world is two different technologies with the evident of flash. On one side, we are seeing capacity sensitive options like your NL SAS disk, or your, which is typically SATA. On the other side, we have got flash disk, which performs wonderfully well. But they have very small footprint in which the, the capacity can be offered. Okay? <coughs> but what it also translates to, I am getting the least dollar per gigabyte metric on SATA disk. While I am also getting least dollar per IOP metric on flash disk. Agree? Is it clear? What flash does is, it can typically scale up more than 3,000 IOPS easily on a single form factor disk, 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch. On the other side, I can have a single spindle of SATA, which typically goes 2 terabyte or 3 terabyte. So on SATA disk, I can have the best option of my dollar per gigabyte as the cost of the procurement. While on the flash, my dollar per IOP comes best. So fundamentally, I'm talking about two different paradigms here in context to flash. In today's storage world, 
I'm talking about dollar per gigabyte and dollar per hour. Now, if my dollar per hour is the cheapest with flash, how do I use flash? I have classically three options. One is I can restrict to the storage or I can go on server and network site. But if I superimpose these options on EMC's offering, it becomes one comprehensive flash offering. What we have got on the storage side, flash offering in the form of hybrid arrays. On the network side, EMC also offers you an option of something called PCI flash cards, which is called VF cache. And there are use cases and there are value associated with all these three options. Okay. In next subsequent slides, I'm going to talk about these three important phases where we can use Flash and I can transform IT, IT infrastructure. Remember, wherever you're going to link those slides, remember dollar per IO and dollar per GB. It's fundamentally important. Flash is expensive, no doubt about it. But the dollar per IO is the cheapest in Flash, period. The whole intelligence lies in how do I use that dollar per IO and use it as according to my environment, as according to my workload. Now, it's just not adding the Flash drive on these arrays. It's also about putting intelligence on it. It's just a piece of hardware. When you put intelligence, it comes in the form of FAST, which stands for Fully Automated Storage Theory. Basically, a FAST suit with an EMC can be used, the FAST software, the intelligence can be used in either in the form of extended cache or in the form of theory. Okay? Let's go to option one, hybrid arrays. I'm sure each one of us has been interacting and using hybrid arrays in some form or another. The question is whether we are using appropriate amount of flash to use it or not. The classic offering of a hybrid array is a kind of a scale up or a scale out architecture which uses optimal amount of flash, optimum amount of SAS, and optimum amount of SATA or NL SAS drives. Which essentially means I'm trying to put load which is capacity sensitive and I'm trying to put load which is performance sensitive. The trick is how much I use, how much SAS I put, how much SATA I put and how much flash I use. And to make it all work, EMC offers you one and only software in the industry as, as a part of complete flash offering called FASU, fast cache. It is about intelligently using the SSD capacity in the form of X cache. Raise me a hand if anybody knows of an array which can really extend its cache on the fly. Give me one hand. With VNX class of arrays, you can extend the cache on the fly. Extend it. Magic? Yes, it is magic for certain application loads. Classic tier one loads. Right? Tell me one thing. In a classical storage design, you keep adding 15K RPM disk. Right? 300 GB, 600 GB. Are you purchasing performance or are you purchasing capacity? Capacity. Depends. You know what? Sometimes you are right. Sometimes you purchase capacity and sometimes you purchase performance. The problem here is, if you end up purchasing performance, you bring down the utilization rate on the capacity front. Because a lot of capacity lying vacant. 
just because you have to handle somebody and consultant from a storage company comes, you know what? Uh, your environment is very performance sensitive. Please add one more drawer of disk, bunch of disk, because you need better performance now, right? But then those disks are not running full. The utilization is really very high, and hence the cost of purchase goes drastically up, drastically up, and not to mention the opex cost, right? With fast suit and in hybrid arrays, now you have an option to either purchase performance or purchase capacity. And that's why they are hybrid arrays, right? This is, this is one of the way you can transform the way you, you use your storage infrastructure. Change it. The approach of procurement goes upside down. But then the question comes, OK, flash is good. I need performance. I want to use flash. But then how much? Well, EMC loves to say a little bit of flash goes a long way. Right? And what is that little bit of flash? Typically, 5%. Now, is this 5% number sent from heaven? No. There is a mathematical calculation behind it. And this is a general rule. The good news is you can have a judgment. You can actually derive in your environment how much flash you want to use. Basically, a function of three questions. How much is the data under management? What is the growth rate? And how much for how much time data remains hot? The last question is tricky one. First two questions you probably answer. What is that hot days? It depends upon the skew of your environment, which essentially means small little portion of your environment will always be hot, while the other big portion will always be cold. Typically, what we have seen, 80% of the environment is always cold, while small little 10, 20% of the environment is hot. But you end up doing a flat configuration and offering all 15K drives humming with very high, like a gas guzzler, right? And eating up all the cost and power, cooling, and whatnot. And then you try to spread the load as much as possible and juggle with your life. OK, this lens become hot. Let me move it to some other new disk. This becomes hot. Let me move that data away. And that creates, remember that picture? That trouble in your life. How do I do it automatically? So if you know what is the skew of your, of your environment, if you know what portion of the data is actually hot, typically 5%, 10%, you will get to know how much flash you need. And if I do some maths, it gives me a very interesting table, which essentially says, what are my hot days? Let's say a data is created on day one for how much time it will remain hot, like your database environment, right? You create entries, some portion will remain hot. And as you go down the line, it will start becoming cold. On the other side, what is the portion or, or the, the growth rate? And if I show you a picture here, this is almost 90, 95% of the cases. which says anything between 1 to 5% is a fairly good number on flash. So understand what is happening here. You have a hot data, you have a cold data. You have, because of EMC's flash offering, you are able to move that hot data into flash automatically by an intelligent called FAST. And by a small little footprint, you are able to dramatically change the environment of your storage systems. And what is that environment? Let's take a case. This is your classic approach. A 32 terabyte usable with 50% growth. If you size it, a very hot data, translates to 210 days for a VNX 5500. And here is the magic. A little bit of flash goes a long way. If I chunk that amount of hot data and supplement it with a 5% cache, what it translates to a smaller footprint on the array, smaller footprint on the controller, lot of savings on the operating cost, 
as well as capex side and yet footprint is reduced power and cooling is gone by one fourth and IOPS going to double there are people who still say flash is expensive probably not do you know just out of curiosity what is the cost of running just the power and cooling of 15 disk a single DAE, 15 disk, 15k drives. Guesses, please. Per year, power and cooling. I'll give you a hint. One lakh twenty-five thousand. It's just a match. You multiply by a five year of life and seat from 210 to 70 days you do the maths so question for you guys can I have an answer please Wow. 30% says no. Okay. All right. For those who have said no, it is yes. With BMX 5500, we do option, we offer option of all flash arrays. Why do you need all flash arrays? Obviously, your tier 1 transaction applications, Oracle SQLs of the world. May be, may not be, or may just be hybrid. All right, let's move to the second topic, VF cache. Uh, <clears throat> it's basically taking this flash dialog right at the server. It's about performance. It's about drastically reducing latencies. It's about drastically reducing the, uh, improving the throughput on the server. It's about protection also. Although I am taking flash on the server, yet it is always backed up by resilient storage. And it's also about intelligence. Because if I am taking flash on the server and able to, able to do lots and lots of IOPS, huge IOPS on the server itself, okay, then I am reducing the utilization of the storage itself, which again means I am able to put more and more load on the storage and hence a better cost, a total cost of ownership. So how does it done? Typically an IOP travels from compute layer after application generates it, goes to network and then goes to storage. Gets an answer, come back to compute layer. It usually takes 10 milliseconds. But here is the magic of uh, fast uh, VF cache. With VF cache inside the server, all your read loads, mind you, this is for reads, and for read intensive loads, 80% plus, they are served then and there on the server itself. And it drastically, by the factor of 1,000 and plus times, reduces the latency on the reads. And yet, the data is protected because you are right through from server to storage for all persistent writes. Where do I use VF cache? <coughs> Classic read intensive environments. Classic tier one application. Where your reporting, your generation, your data churning, your uh, data mining becomes very, very important. And with VF cache, because of limited input, EMC offered you, offered now a deduplication inbuilt on VF cache technologies. What it means is that it enhances again many folds the ability of cache to hold unique IOs intelligently in combination with the server. And this is the magic. These are the access EMC love to actually communicate. If you take a factor of one on a baseline load with just putting VF cache, you are able to increase the performance to 2.5x. It itself is huge. But 
and that is what EMC flash one strategy because EMC is not about offering solution in, in, in chunks and pieces. Whenever EMC come at a solution, it's always an integrated solution. So your ability of VF cache to talk intelligently to the storage becomes also important, which is a unique value. And when it does this magic with fast cache, you can go almost 8x. So if you're doing 10,000 IOPS, you're talking about 80,000 IOPS on the same, maybe the NX53 footprint. That's huge. Think of the amount of storage. Think about the savings you want to do. Thinks about the, 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 the response time you're going to generate. And thinks about minimizing latency. And talking about latency. This is future, guys. So uh, this is just a flash at the forum, OK? EMC has acquired an Israeli company by the name Extreme IO. And what is this? This is from bottom up pure flash array. Uh, this product is still not in the market. We are hoping to bring this uh, product uh, next year. But it takes the whole dialogue of performance to very next level. Yet it is backed up by all enterprise class uh, options. Snapshots, mirroring, load balancing, and whatnot. Give me, raise a single hand which has environment running, uh, in which storage is running 50,000 IOPS. Just give me a raise of hand. No? OK, 10,000? One? You can raise it, OK. 20, 30,000? OK. And you're talking in context to a single storage? I'm, hope, I'm hoping there will be other storage also. What if I tell you, within this much footprint, approximately, I give you an option of 1 million IOPS? Believe me, we will be struggling to find a use case for it. But Extreme IOP is a scale out solution. It essentially is a pure flash offering working on a brick and you add up the breaks, latency rem remains flat under 0.5 milliseconds. And you know what? Why is this 0.5 millisecond? Because the network is taking a little bit of time to transfer those IOs, not the array. And you keep adding the breaks, 250k IOPS. Tick, 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 tick. How is that? Sounds like a transformation? It is. So. What, what do we have now? Takeaways. Raise your hand, flash is expensive. Please. Still? Meet me outside the door. OK. Four key takeaways. Little bit of flash goes a long way. Why? It reduces your cost of ownership. It, it, dramatically enhances the performance, it reduces the footprint, it reduces the capex, drastically reduces the opex, and gives you huge upside to grow with your same investment. Please, a little bit of flash, ask your EMC rep, please, can you add flash for me? Next, with hybrid arrays now, it's the lowest TCO. Total cost of ownership is drastically down. With VF cache, it's not about just the amount of IOPS. It's about drastically reducing the latency. Latency, which comes for an IO traveling from the compute layer till the storage layer. If you really want to cut down those latencies also, VF cache is for you. And, and it works in integration with your storage arrays, which no technology in the world can do, honestly. You're serving an IO right then and there only. And last, future. EMC loves to have these forward-looking technologies. Remember Extreme IO. If somebody argues with you, can you give me an option of extreme, extreme performance use cases? You know what? EMC already has a solution. Thank you, guys. Thank you for listening. Abhinav, hang on, hang on. So if, if I was to ask you a question saying, Tell me only one thing which we want everyone to remember. What would that be? 
you talked about four, I think. Little bit of flash goes a long way. All right. Thank you so much.